for a fair contract, Solomon Leach. I'm a reporter with the Daily News, and we're out here for a fair contract. That's all we're asking for is a fair deal. We've got a, an investor who bought this paper a couple years ago knowing what he was getting into, and now he's trying to bend the biggest union who helped build this company over backwards. It makes no sense. You say you want to preserve the papers because they're important to Philadelphia, yet you're trying to destroy the people who who build the papers and who are who are the heartbeat of the papers. So we're, we're looking for a fair deal. If he doesn't give it to us, then, then we'll be forced to take whatever actions are necessary. I mean, this is serious. This is important. And he knew what he was getting into when he bought these papers. He can't plead ignorance. Do you feel betrayed? I feel as... I, I feel as though he's not trying to negotiate in good faith. It's, it's as if he knew that he was going to pull this when he bought these papers. And all we're asking for is affordable health care. I mean, we're talking about we haven't had raises in years. And we're not asking for anything exorbitant. This is not a Cadillac plan. We're asking for fair health care. And we're asking for seniority, which is the basis of, of organized labor. I mean, come on, this guy got to know it. Well, he feels apparently he can bring in new people, have a turnover, and he's got to Yeah. Well, well, well. Outsource your, your jobs. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see. You know, I, I mean, obviously, he doesn't. Uh, I, I think he doubts the strength of the union and and that's what he's that's what they're poking at is that they're, they're trying to undercut and they're hoping that there are enough people who will break ranks but it's not going to happen and he'll find out we just need a fair contract why are they paying hardball i understand uh, they gave it to the teamsters they gave them the health they gave them the health care and it's free for them for them yes but you're different we are different <laughs> But we deserve what everybody else deserves, a fair contract. What's your name? Maria. I'm in advertising. I'm here to, to protect our, to protect our health care. Um, my salary has gone down 15% since 1999, and they're asking us to add what, in my case, would be another $7,000 to our health care. I'm spending the day working on a story about the Supreme Court's decision today to protect um, subsidies for consumers with Obamacare in 34 states. Had it gone the other way, I could have ended up with that health care. They paid for the Teamsters, but not the uh, guild. Why? Smaller guild, smaller union. Washington Post and New York Times worked it out. Inquirer did not. You know, Inquirer News did not. What's your name? I'm Carol. What are you writing This about? is Don. Okay. It's my wife, Carol Bates. I cover health care. It's a very personal, very personal story so, for me. What does it mean for you? You say another seven thousand dollars. You haven't. What you? You can't survive. How do you survive? That's right. I can't survive. I don't know what I would do. I've been here for twenty-eight years. Um, I love my job, and I don't know what I would do. What would the city do nope. without the newspaper? That's what I want to. Know. Philly News and also Philly.com. He owns all three. They're all in the same boat. When Jerry Lenfest bought this paper, we were thrilled. He was a, a major philanthropist with a good reputation. He told us, basically, you, you guys have been through a lot. Work hard. We're going we're gonna to protect you. And he sounded like a great owner. I'm not sure what's going on right now, but if he wants to keep this paper coming out and readers reading it, he needs to seriously think about the people who write the stories, take care of circulation, the people who make the place run. This employer came to us when he was acquiring this property and committed that this time around in bargaining, he would fully fund the health care plan. And it's no surprise to anyone, here they are sitting here saying, we're not going to fund it now, and they want more givebacks. There'll be no more givebacks. No more! No more! There'll be a contract that respects workers' rights and respects seniority, right? For a gentleman, and I use that term loosely, a gentleman of his age to come here and attack seniority for the people who have been here before he owned it and wrote this paper and built this to what it is. It had nothing to do with the destruction of this publication. To come here and try to attack seniority is an insult to every single member in this union and this community. Every labor union member and every employee of any corporation that wants to be attacked based on how long you served and how long you stay committed to your employer should be insulted by the proposals of this corporation. Yeah! 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 Mike 
job as a representative from the National CWA is to bring every CWA member here in the city of Philadelphia and the tri-state area here to stand with you and support you and the newspaper guild in your negotiations. Also, the power of every politician who benefits from this newspaper, who comes here to look for your endorsement during the political process, needs to get engaged in this process now and defend your rights and defend your contract with this employer. We will make sure from the district that every politician, every member of every other CWA bargaining unit is here to stand with you and support you. You have the representatives here with you today of the Verizon East bargaining, which is going on at the Sheridan from New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, and West Virginia, and Washington, D.C. are here standing with you this afternoon to support your negotiation. Yeah. And we'll be here with you. I'm your attorney. <laughs> it's really my privilege to uh, stand with you today. Let me tell you one thing. I have been through many, many bargaining sessions and I can tell you that what's happening what's happening in this bargaining ain't bargaining it's dictating we your your committee has spent over 40 sessions trying to get a rational explanation for why eviscerating your seniority rights makes any sense and the answer they got is nothing and all we hear about is from Lenfest, this isn't a charity. He's right. We're not asking about charity. It's not charity. It's an investment. An investment in your newspaper, in your journalism, and in everything this paper's ever stood for. So I'm proud to be with you today. I'm honored to be representing you in this. And I know if you stand tough and stay together, there is no way that you can lose this. Two years ago, we were asked to help the company, and they would help us. The company was owned by a group of millionaires and billionaires who asked for $6 million in concessions. And originally, it was $8 million. They ended up getting $5.9 million from this union. After we had given back two years before that to the hedge funds, another group of billionaires. And prior to that, to Brian Tierney, who bankrupted the company. Where is Brian today? In Rome. In Rome with the Pope today, while he still works for this company. God bless what an him. outrage. So again, we've done enough to help this employer repeatedly. And there's no more to give. We're done. No more give backs. It's our turn. It's our turn. And we have to stand strong. And I thank all the support from the AFL-CIO and the CWA and the International uh, Guild and the Teachers Union and AFSCME and everybody else. It's our turn. We need to get a fair contract. Our members cannot give back another penny. Yeah. You're all making less than you made 10 years ago working for this employer. One of the richest philanthropists in the city. We're not asking for charity. We're asking what's right for our workers and our members at philly.com, at the Daily News, and at the Inquirer. And we've spent eight months trying to get a fair deal that we deserve, that Mr. Lenfest came to the bargaining table two years ago with Lewis Katz, God rest his soul, and said, you help us and we'll help you. And now he claims he never came to the bargaining table. He doesn't remember saying that. That's an outrage, and we're not taking it anymore. So it's our turn. We want a fair contract, and we thank you for your support. I think it's a disgrace that we've, we've, our union has given back every single contract. We haven't had a raise in almost 10 years, and now they want to take away seniority and not pay health care. It's absolutely a disgrace. It's not a charity, and we're not volunteers. We're going to fight. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, in this battle. I'm Jerry Jordan. I'm the president of the Philadelphia Federation of Teachers. Yay! We are here with you today because, as you know, we have been going through the same struggle. The issues that are facing this union are the same issues 
that are facing the members of the PFT. Yes. Yes. The management does not want workers to have rights. It's as simple as that. They don't want us to have rights. They don't want us to have voice. And they use different types of excuses. Oh, you've been working for the company too long. So therefore, you shouldn't have the same rights. What do you mean? Are you asking for people to turn over the jobs over and over again? Experience does matter. Experience makes a difference. But that's not what they want. They don't want us to have a say about our earnings or a say about our working conditions. And our working conditions are so important to the end product that we all produce. So I want you to know, Newspaper Guild members, that the PFT is here and we're here in solidarity with you. And we will be with you through this fight. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. We will fight and we will fight with you. You heard from Ed Mooney, uh, Vice President of District 13. I'm here to tell you, you've got the support of members throughout the Guild, Canada, down to Puerto Rico. Uh, we're we're going to fight this fight. The Guild was told that uh, this is not a charity, and yet this owner thinks that you should give and give. It should be a charity for you, that you should not come out on this, and that your health care shouldn't be covered. Well, there was a promise made on health care, and we keep bringing it up. They promised health care, and you deserve your health care paid for. We're going to fight for that, and we're going to fight to hold back on the seniority, which is a crazy request. It, it just is extreme. They don't need it. It's not necessary. So also want to tell you that you have the support of Chris Shelton, the incoming president of CWA. And I talked to the outgoing president, Larry Cohen, and he knows Lenfest. And he said, this doesn't make any sense. This isn't what this guy stands for. He knows better. So we're going to show him that he knows better. We're going to educate him. And we're going to fight. So we stand up. We fight back. What do we do? We stand up, we fight back. We stand up, we fight back. Thank you. Communication Workers of America, I'm in the same union as the Enquirer workers. Where do you work? I work for Verizon and CWA. And what's going on at Verizon? Well, right now we just started contract negotiations with them. Uh, it opened up two days ago. Um, same, same issues that are here. Is Verizon saying they don't have enough money? I mean, oh yeah, Verizon, one of, the, one of the biggest employers in the world. They're claiming they don't have any money and they're struggling, but everybody can see the reports. I mean, they're right online. They're, they're making billions and billions every year, and they're just trying to squeeze the work of people. And Verizon, there was another, another strike a couple of years ago? Yes, what was, right here. What, what happened? What happened on strike? Well, we went on strike for two and a half weeks because they refused to negotiate, you know, honestly with us. Um, and then we agreed after that they wanted us back to work because their business was failing when it already was. We had a back to work agreement and we went another 12, 13 months bargaining with them. Just like we, you know, the, the paper company did. Now it's our turn and they need to give some back. What do you want? It seems like these companies have a what do you want? With oh, yeah. What do you want? Yeah, I mean, the minute we went into bargaining and negotiations, they jumped into the media and started putting lies on the media websites um, to kind of entice our members to work against us. But, you know, we're so strong, they, they can't do it. And you know, do you think it would be forced to go out and strike again? I don't know if we're going to be forced to. Um, I know that we're ready for it, and as you can see by 2011, we're not afraid to go on strike if we have to, to, to support our members. And Did those members who were fired get their jobs back? Yes, every one of them. Every one of them got their job back. So that was basically a frame-up? It was a frame-up. They had no, no real... Uh, nothing on them, and even the, the ones they had videos on, they said, we have videos of these people. Um, we saw the videos, and they said, oh, yeah, probably we don't have anything on them. And it, I mean, it was it was that ridiculous. So intimidation? They uh, yep, to... they tried it. You know, because they talked about unions and intimidation, the union, but they're actually the intimidators, and, you know, we were the kind of putting the fires out. What do you think labor is going on in this country? It's CWA news were fighting against TPP. It seems like Obama helped to push through in some senators. Oh, he did help to push through it, and I, and I think the senators... Congressman, whoever voted with that is going to have a problem with CWA. As you know, we have a ton of 
geez, we have 50,000 members just here on the East, let alone what we have in the whole country, and we're going to make a stand and we're going to talk to those people when they come around asking for our support when the elections come. You think Reagan should have its own political party? You know what? I, I've always thought that in my head, yeah, but la some, one of the political parties needs to be pro-labor, and that would be the quickest way, but yeah, Labor Party would be great. Well, what do you think the new president's going to do, Chris Shelton? Oh, Chris Shelton, I, he's going to, Larry was a good president, but Chris, Chris Shelton is definitely going to take, take it up a notch. He's uh, uh, very enthusiastic and a good friend. I'm a journalist from L.A. I was laid off by CBS, CBS Radio, and I think it absolutely stinks. Outsourcing is horrible. It's not the way to go. I don't know how many jobs they've outsourced here. I'm not from Philadelphia. But the same thing is happening in L.A., of course, and elsewhere around the world. And look, yes, actually, yes, they do. And so they don't have to pay the benefits, of course. And it's kind of ironic on a day when Obamacare gets a big victory in the U.S. Supreme Court. They ruled the subsidies were legal. So, but employers are still probably going to try to get around it by making everyone part time. I just retired. Thank, I belong to uh, uh, SAG-AFTRA, the show business union in Los Angeles, in the L.A. local. But I'm telling, uh, and, you know, th and I have a pension. And I don't know what these guys have here, but, you know, you, you need some union protections now in this day and age. You got it, management? My name's Ed Collimore, and I'm a reporter at the Philadelphia Inquirer. I've been a reporter here since uh, 1982. Uh, for 33 years, and uh, uh, you know, right now we're looking to get a fair contract, one that takes care of our health care, and uh, uh, one that preserves seniority. Um, this is a, a, a great place to work. Uh, we're just looking to, uh, as I say, get a fair contract. What's the aim of the owner? Why would he do this? He promised you that he was going to provide for you if you didn't make concessions, you a lot of concessions. Well, I, I, I think you, you would have to ask him that. <laughs> so, you feel betrayed? Uh, I, I just, like I say, want to have a fair contract. You know, that's, uh, I don't want to say anything disparaging about, you know, the owner. Um, can he afford it? Can he afford it? I think he can. You know, I mean, as, as we said, uh, you know, before, you know, it's not charity, it's an investment. Um, you need experienced people if you're going to have a, a great newspaper. And um, I think we have a lot of experienced people here that do their job well. I mean, you can look at all the, the Pulitzers that have been won, the various prizes, and, and uh, you want to keep those people. If you, if you don't provide a fair contract, you're going to lose a lot of those people. Yeah, I mean, it seems like professional journalists have been laid off in the thousands. The level of experience you you, you, you want to uh, bring together uh, makes the place what it is. And uh, the Enquirer is a, is a great newspaper uh, since, you know, 1829. Uh, I mean, we've covered uh, the Civil War and every every aspect, of, you know, throughout history. Uh, we've been here. I mean, we had, uh, we had a, a reporter at the Battle of Gettysburg, Uriah Hunt Painter, who managed to get his reports from the battlefield back to the newspaper here in Philadelphia and have it printed and then bundles of newspapers sent out to the, uh, to the, uh, to the town, to, the, to Gettysburg, uh, and, and then um, distributed among the Union troops before the outcome of the battle was even known. Uh, there are a lot of firsts here, and uh, uh, I, I think we want to continue to go in that direction. My name is Jan Heffler, and I'm a, a reporter in Jersey. Been there for decades, and um, you know, it's a noble profession. It's a it's a hard. We put in a lot of hard work, and you know, all we have left now is our dignity, and we have to we have to do this because you know they took our pensions, they took our health care, no raises. We're putting in a lot of sweat and and uh, effort and you know our dignity is important too and this is why we have to take a stand. I know it's 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 baffling it's mind-boggling. I cover politics, I cover um, social issues, I cover the marijuana dispensaries, <laughs> I cover a, a whole assortment gamut of, of things. Now I think some of these uh, publishers want to get temporary people in or free outsource and you think that's part of what you're 
maybe, but I part of me feels that he is more intelligent than that. So I'm hoping that you know he comes to his senses or his advisors uh, tell him that you know this is not really the way to go. What do the teachers have to do with what's going on here? Teachers union and are you think you're this is a labor this is a labor issue and certainly the demands that are being made by uh, of the newspaper guild are very very similar to the same demands that the teachers who have been fighting for a fair contract for the last two years are facing. So the demands are very, very, very similar. They're trying to take away your health care and, and benefits? They are trying to strip labor of the rights to collectively bargain, to have a voice in the uh, working conditions under which they work. And do you think there's going to be more unity in the labor movement with these attacks increasing on different unions? I do. I do. I've seen uh, the uh, labor unions come together. We saw it uh, recently in the last two elections here in the city, uh, certainly the state for Governor Wolf as well as a uh, city for uh, the mayor. And privatization, is that a threat to labor? Privatization is absolutely a threat to labor because uh, when uh, services are privatized, which is what the school district, the SRC, just did with uh, our substitute teachers, that, uh, you know, I, I can't tell you what salary they're going to pay those workers, what the working conditions are going to be. Uh, the private company will make that decision. The union is, the, we're the only people who have the, are able to have the voice for the workers. They're trying to outsource the nurses. Well, they've already voted to outsource the, the, uh, the substitute teachers that we have represented for years in this union. And now the School Reform Commission has voted to outsource that service. And we're fighting, we're fighting, we are fighting to keep our nurses from being outsourced. Because then they'll come after the teachers and they'll outsource them too. We can't afford to lose more union members, more qualified, certified people. They don't have the same pay, they won't have the same benefits, they're working for another company. They will no longer be employees of the School District of Philadelphia, and they will no longer be protected by the Philadelphia Federation of Teachers Collective Bargaining Agreement. Miss Kitty Caparella, I used to be president of the Newspaper Guild in the 90s, and it is outrageous what Lenfest and his people are doing to this, to these newspapers and to these people who work hard every day and deserve health care and deserve a pension. The pension's gone, but the health care, the most important thing about living and working is being able to get your treatment when you need it for you and your family. It's, it's, they need to have a fair contract right now. Yes, I, I have no clue unless he was fed the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, Kool-Aid, the Kool-Aid by the Teamsters, who knows? In any case, um, the Teamsters, some of those guys are my friends too, but you know, it's outrageous. You think he's trying to pit the Teamsters against the Guild? Oh, that's been happening for decades. Has it worked? No. Do you think if you're, if you're forced to go out here, the Teamsters and the other unions will support you? Uh, well, the Teamsters already said they're going to cross the picket line. They're going to cross the picket line? That's what they said. At least that's what the newspaper said. So, let's hope not. Okay, thank you. Okay. There's an attack on newspaper workers all over the country. They're getting laid off. They're getting in temporary workers. The profession, professional writers yes. are under threat. I mean, what do you think about what's happening with professional journalists in the United States? Right well, now? it's really, it's really outrageous because what you get on the internet, without having the kind of ethics and the um, responsibility that we have had to uh, follow as a newspaper reporter, columnist, etc., that we had to verify, we had to confirm, that we had to make sure of, um, you know, what we were reporting. And those people don't know those rules. They don't know that they are having to, you know, you know, verify, confirm, check with another source. You know, and that that is really, really, really bad. It's almost like we are going back to the 17, 1800 pamphlet out there had its own opinion without 
you know, checking the facts. So you think it's a disservice to the public not to Absolutely a disservice to the public. It is. We have Harry Steinmetz, Treasurer, Local 3631. Of what? EPA, uh, AFGE, 3631. And why are you here today? In support of the, of the Newspaper Guild, try to get them a fair contract. I haven't gotten a raise in six years, it's long overdue. Are AFGE members under attack? AFGE members are constantly under attack by Congress, uh, particularly Congress, and by many representatives, senators, and, and politicians. Why, why do they attack public workers in this country? Like uh, I guess because we don't have the ability to strike, and uh, they think we're not organized, but we are organized, and we are pushing back. And what are the issues that concern you here? Uh, Health care, seniority. No raises in 10 years. It's ridiculous. How do you survive? Barely. <laughs> so why are they taking a different line with the Teamsters, do you think? They I, 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 I can't answer that. I don't know. But it's not fair. So it's not fair. did you believe the owner when, owners when they said that they would take care of you? Yes, and I was at the table at the time when it was oh, said. Really? Yes, I'm the guild treasurer. And what did, what did they say? They said, well, if you go along with it. We'll work through this together. And, um, you know, if, if we made concessions, then this would be able to thrive on. And we got bonus checks saying that the company was making money. So now is our turn. So do you feel betrayed? Absolutely. Do you Absolutely. believe the owner? Absolutely. Who wouldn't? We and why want wouldn't a we? fair contract. Yeah, fair is fair. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Uh, hey, uh, what well, this guy led first? He didn't give you any donation for politics. He's giving out millions of dollars. He can't give you a contract. He can't give you a fair contract. Mr. Lenfest, why don't you do the right thing and tell your minions here that they got to sit down and negotiate a fair contract for people who are the paper. You are the paper. You are the newspaper. What kind of a newspaper want to be if you didn't have writers? And if you control the writers and took away their seniority, you'd have the same newspapers they have in Russia, controlled by the bosses. Do you want writers? Do you want writers that write their own thinking? Even though I don't always agree with their thinking, it's free thinking. It's not somebody up top telling you what you can write and what you can, and who you can endorse and who you can. We can't have that kind of a newspaper here. We might as well not have a newspaper. So, Mr. Lenfest, tell your people to sit down and negotiate a fair collective bargaining agreement and stop trying to play, play around with seniority. Stop trying to play around with those things that are, are manufactured things, health and welfare, a decent wage. That's what's real. Give these people a chance to go back to work and make sure your paper's here for another year. Yetzi, I-E-Z-Z-I. -Z -Z uh, I'm a guild member, uh, a retiree. I retired uh, uh, October 14, 2011, on a buyout. And why are you here today? Uh, I'm here today to support the union. I'm not really a union guy. I know that's going to be a surprise to a lot of my colleagues. But this union, I feel, uh, has uh, really given back all that it can give back. The union was always fair with me, stood by me when I was uh, a writer here for the Philadelphia Inquirer. And uh, that's why I'm supporting you. What do we want? Fair contract! When do we want it? Now! What do we want?